Hello, 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 and welcome to another episode of Podcast Pasta. That's the podcast that's like pasta, not the podcast that's about pasta. As always, I'm your host, Mike. And today I'm joined with Chicago-based artist China Smith. You are a singer, a poet. I believe you'll do dance. You're mm-hmm. an organizer mm-hmm. for a number of different organizations. Um, the I think one of the most notable being uh, Young Chicago Authors. Uh, China, how are you doing today? I'm doing great. Um, I started my morning off pretty well. I did some meditation and some stretching. The weather has been a lot in Chicago, so I had a well, nice glad. start to my morning. <laughs> well, yeah, glad to hear. Um, so my leading question that I always like to ask guests is, I know I gave you a very brief introduction, but I guess you kind of want to expand on that and explain in your own words uh, what you do and what motivates the content that you create. So what I do is just create art that reflects my day-to-day experience, and some would call it artivism. Um, I personally just like to reflect on myself and my life in an artistic way that began with just picking up music and dance as a child. And underneath my parents, actually, I learned a lot of different things. My dad taught me how to play the keyboard. So, you know, I just got bored here and there, and I just started you know, experiments with things. I started to sing and dance around that time as well. So, um, excuse the background. I'm so sorry. Um, no, no, you're fine. Um, so, oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And in that aspect of artivism, there's just a lot of social issues that have happened in and around my neighborhood and area. So, as a kid, I just had responses to everything. And as I began to learn more, those responses developed into different artistic pieces, such as spoken word and later on campaign work. Now, from my understanding, I, I, I believe you did study, um, you know, art, uh, at least at, uh, at a collegiate level, if I'm not mistaken. Is that correct? Mm-hmm. So what was the nature of uh, that program for you? Like, what did you specifically uh, study? Um, what, what was your intended goal of, like, going to school to, to, like, I guess, essentially hone your craft? So my initial goal was to give it a try. I initially wanted to go to school for different things. I saw myself in social work. And although I was an artist, um, I just saw some of the things happening in my surrounding as a very serious thing. Now, I wanted to try art for, you know, a short amount of time because I saw art as something that inspired me to continue to push through, seeing everything I went through growing up. And I am now taking a break from school, but it honestly is an experience I will return to. And giving it a try at that level for me was stepping outside of my comfort zone, too. Um, Chicago is big, but... You know, you get pretty used to it when you do so much in the city. And my school was full sale. Um, There's different reasons as to why I take a break too, but um, it was a good experience to network and connect with professors who came from all over the world. So things that I thought I knew expanded into like, wow, there's, there's more out here. There's a lot going on in different ways to express that. So. So, so I guess for like other artists that, um, or aspiring artists that might be in a similar position to yourself, would you recommend schooling? Because I know people have different goals sometimes where, uh, especially with the whole YouTube space, some people feel that it's easier just to start with like, you know, YouTube and just kind of build like, I guess an audience and forego like schooling to, you know, enhance their craft. You see this sometimes with like artists and things like that. But I, I guess for you, um, yeah, would you recommend it still given like, you know, your own experience with it? After my experience, I would say that um, if you need help or support with networking, I honestly think that school could be a good choice. From my personal experience, I don't necessarily think that it is a requirement dependent on what you want to do in life. You know, I've had a lot of success as a freelancer and for the most part, I made a lot of like money directly from some of the projects that I was on, either through organizations or in community. So if you are not social in the aspect of, hey, I can go outside and just talk to people and go from there. I honestly do think that school is worth a shot. 
However, um, just some of the lens I've developed from some of my personal work and seeing some of the different disparities that may make it harder for a person to get into school. Um, my advice to people who may lean away for those similar reasons is to still find a community because um, not being in school is really as successful as you allow it to be because it's really not the only option. However, you still have to build some type of network to move around. Like I think community is a literal community thing. Just knowing what you're interested in, knowing who to go to for certain supports has always been something that has le like led me and helped me. So, yeah. Now, admittedly, even though, you know, I, I do this podcast where, you know, I analyze um, media and like, you know, art. Uh, admittedly, I haven't been, I haven't really kept up with like the Chicago scene itself. Uh, and granted, I know with our inter, our modern interconnected world, like local art scenes aren't necessarily what they used to be. But I think even mm -hmm. in a modern context, a lot of people focus, um, you know, on the coasts like LA and New York. So I guess, um, from your experience, what do you think makes the Chicago art scene uh, unique, especially in the modern era? People describing Chicago as a melting pot is not a mistake. I think that with the art scene in Chicago, something interesting that I saw was the layers to people's artistic personalities. Now, I met a lot of people who were known for specific things. They had their staples, but... I guess that's something that I've observed and learned from the Chicago artistic scene is that it's okay to be multifaceted if you have it together, you know? So just seeing all those different layers in the different cultures in Chicago still impacting artists, even if they are connected. Um, that's, that's just something interesting and distinct about Chicago. I've even had some time to visit one of the other coasts. I visited New York last September. It was, it was an experience, but, um, I think that for me, I was still, I was still in awe at how, how unique I still felt Chicago was. I don't know if it's a bias, but I also just noticed that there's just amount of like bravery with coming forth as your most multifaceted self. There are artists who are just like, okay, I sing, I dance, I, I fucking tap dance. You know, there's a lot of things that people do outside of artistry that still pours into themselves. And, um, with Chicago being so, I guess people would say it's a broken up city. We've been heavily impacted by red light and other forms of like segregation, whether people understand that or not. It's, it's pretty interesting. It's distinct here. Um, you still see a type of resistance and survival outside of artistry that, you know, creates people who are very multifaceted. And you'll find a Chicago artist somewhere doing something you didn't know they could do. So Dublin as an artist and a person who does campaign work, or something that just came from understanding my layers and my complexity and um, taking advantage of that melting pot. So I guess kind of following that through line then, uh, what unique challenges do you think are presented for Chicago artists, um, especially as they, uh, you know, trying to expand these, like, these communities? Excess. <laughs> access and to be more specific i would say um the neighborhood that i came from began to get a certain amount of access maybe later on in the game that um left a few people uninspired when that same type of support wasn't extended and we're also seeing that transformation of this is what happens when a community begins to get funded this is what happens when you let a community be um that creates a lot of barriers for artists. And I think that this is still a universal thing, though. It's not just a Chicago thing, although um, some of the things that happen here are very specific to us. When it comes to certain neighborhoods, I think that regardless of your background, race, gender, et cetera, you can relate to possibly not being able to afford something or not having the best quality at something based on just how long that line is. You know, sometimes getting studio time is stressful and sometimes when you do you have to work with what you have and that's why um for me i go back to saying community was a solution but just that access there's certain neighborhoods that are like years behind other neighborhoods and they're like two miles apart so 
it's interesting to see that in real time in Chicago and in different cities as I've visited different places. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty segregated. <laughs> um, now, you, uh, you are a spoken word poet, and I, I, I've seen like the brief, uh, I, like uh, I believe like a uh, reel that you have doing some of your spoken word poetry. Um, again, that's another field that I haven't had like a lot of experience in. I know um, that, uh, well, I, I, I guess I would say as somebody who is a spoken word poet, that like somebody that wants to get into that because it's not as, I guess, how would I say like, of like open as like other, like it, forms like artistic expressions like singers you can find on youtube you know and like just you know spotify or what have you same thing with like artists with you know um x or twitter or whatever it's called um but for spoken word poets like how, how would you how would somebody get into that scene if they want to see others uh kind of put out their craft like i imagine like youtube but um I, I guess let's say for somebody in Chicago, like what would be the go-to, like if they want to experience like locally? So I have um, <clears throat> two things I thought of off the back was to one, look at open mics in your area and I could drop a few open mics that are very um, well known. You mentioned one of them, but Young Chicago Authors, I did some work with them as well, but they have... The longest running open mic in Chicago, actually, which is another place to um, learn about the history of spoken word as it relates to Chicago. Um, if you are just a spoken word enthusiast, whether you want to get up on stage or just learn about the history, because it's a very dope history. Young Chicago Office, which is in the um, Logan Square-ish neighborhood, that's a great place to start. They have open mics on Tuesdays. Um, I think at 6 p.m. They also have writing workshops that start beforehand, which is the second um, point I was going to bring up. Go to a workshop. You don't have to have any experience. You don't have to have any type of even, I don't even want to say passion, but you don't have to have a will to do poetry long term to go to one of these workshops, especially since a lot of the kind of a lot of the inspiration that goes into these workshops to do centered pedagogy and just learning through your own experiences and how you reflect upon yourself where you stand in society just pop up outside of young chicago authors you can catch some workshops and open mics at other places such as um there's a collective called platform chicago that does open mics on the south and west sides of chicago there's hmm, the chicago poetry center which is based in Hyde Park. They do events and workshops, and they also have poetry residency if you really, really, really want to get tapped in. And um, the there's a collective connected to Young Chicago Authors for Writers as well if you want to teach poetry or do it in a facilitation capacity. And um, I could talk in circles about more of them. I don't know how much time we have. Um, just wanted to check that real quick. <laughs> oh, um, well, uh, usually the calls last for an hour, but you know, it's it's up to you um, when we can call it. Uh, but yeah, usually just an hour. Oh, yeah. Um, there's also a poetry festival that is connected to young Chicago authors um, called Rooted and Radical Now. I competed in high school. Um, that's another that's another festival to get tapped in with, even if you just want to see poetry. It starts with really just, you know, showing up to open mics or just events that have that offered and networking with your local spoken word artist. Now, um, I know there's been kind of, uh, I don't know, some people have discussed uh, the idea that it's especially like kind of in our more modern times there has been this kind of bleed between like spoken word poetry and like music to the point where some people would argue how much of a distinction there is between the two 
So I guess as somebody that both sings and does, uh, you know, spoken word poetry, what, what do you think would be the specific difference for you? If there is even really one, because I'm, because personally I'm on the camp that like, you know, it, there is kind of a point where there is not really an inseparability between the two, but I, I'm curious to hear your thoughts on it. So when it comes to spoken word and music, I do think that there are lots of differences. However, I think that with how it's shared in a modern way, there doesn't have to be a difference. Now, when it comes to a spoken word, and um, I, I love this topic because there is a specific history that it has in Chicago that bounced off of slam poetry. Spoken word in its roots and history is a lot more competitive, or even if it's not competitive, it's a lot more proud. It's a lot more bold and I would say celebratory of yourself, your community, your tribe. And this will start in open mics. This will start in certain ciphers. And this bounces off of other histories of art, such as hip hop, poetry, other things that kind of reflect storytelling and sharing those experiences. I think that there are moments where it is inseparable from singing and music and other forms of art. When you talk about something I mentioned earlier called People wouldn't call it artivism. I like to describe things that way in umbrellas to shorten some of these conversations, but um, I want to go more in depth about that. But um, the thing that kind of brings them together is that aspect of storytelling that is real, raw, and personal, which could require a person to sing to share that story. I know that we're not competed in, um, it was called Louder Than a Bomb. We're not competed, but it is now called Rooted and Radical. I sang during some of my pieces as there were certain songs and messages that were that kind of needed that oomph to get the point across and also bring out the performance aspect. So with spoken word also being um, like having an element of performance that's meant to be maintained, singing, dancing, rapping, sometimes, mm, well, in some pieces, um, in some spoken word um, competitions, people use other things maybe props but i know in certain competitions i was in that's not it wasn't allowed but anything to get it across sometimes people use spoken word in theater so um it could go as far as using a prop it could be a lot more theatrical so spoken word is kind of this evolving thing where it uses elements of storytelling poetry and sometimes a competitive nature depending on where it is to get the message across so I guess that's some more uh, in between answer because I, I do agree with the fact that it, it's almost inseparable at times, but the history of it does come from a more competitive slam poetry esque scene. Now, with your own um, work, uh, I've gotten a sense like I, I don't know necessarily completely which is why i would want to get more of your input on it but i get the sense that there is kind of this underlying theme that connects a lot of what you do but i i guess uh am, am i in the right ballpark is there something like that or is it uh, kind of more broad and you are just exploring different topics and ideas i would say yes there is an underlying theme and expert exploration is a part of that theme but um one thing that was heavy for me throughout um, spoken word, and it still is, although I have not been performing a lot, I've been writing a lot. Um, what I've learned about intersectionality has bridged a type of compassion for myself and others that helps me to view myself and the world a little bit differently. So each piece is a bit more, I guess, evolved. You know, I think that some of the pieces I have up may kind of reflects some of the more, some of the attitudes I had throughout high school, but they're still a part of me as they kind of reflect what I'm learning as I'm navigating the will of power or just understanding the privileges or the lack thereof I may have as a person. And I think that this is a pretty timeless theme because there's often a lot of things happening in the world that may, you know, cause you to look at things a different way or just question how you can activate with as much compassion and you know, patience with yourself as possible. So that is an underlying thing, just looking at myself and others 
with awareness to the privilege that I may have or lack in a certain capacity and knowing how to be realistic and navigate in the world. And um, recently that theme has kind of opened up to a more self-compassionate and compassionate space as being an adult does come with certain privileges and shifts in mindsets that you know, maybe I wasn't holding on to or anticipating as strongly as a young person, but extremely pivotal in that journey because navigating that will of power is acknowledging the privileges that you would develop in life. Knowing what you reflect back to children, being aware of, you know, not wanting to be a role model, but still understanding that you are connected to youth, you are connected to elders and have a, like, you participate in community whether or not you see it. So. Yeah, that, that was pretty spot on. I, there is a theme underneath that, and it caused me to explore myself. Is it okay if I go on mute for two seconds? Um, yeah, sure. I guess I'll, I'll jam with my uh, audience for a second. Uh, but yeah, so far, if you have been enjoying the program, you could support the podcast in you know a number of different ways. I have a ko-fi account for one-time donations you can still do monthly but i'd recommend my uh patreon account more for the monthly because you have different tiers with different like rewards for each um uh, you know tier like one's like a sweatshirt or something like that um but yeah thank you once again for joining us so far uh if you're new to podcast pasta hi i'm mike i host um interviews with uh different artists or you know people in or content creation from all walks of life uh i'm pretty much open to anything uh kind of a goal of this channel is always to i i guess focus on people that otherwise wouldn't have really been like discussed to get their story um and so if you want to help support me in that project again like i said ko-fi or patreon helps me a lot uh but also just subscribing to uh to my uh youtube or my spotify uh i i am also on youtube if you want like a video form of this podcast i think spotify also lets you do the video podcasting yeah yeah it does but um it it because of okay it's complicated with how anchor distributes a podcast um you know it's some places have the video format some don't so you know just uh if you want to be sure to get the video it's definitely on youtube and spotify uh is are you back china or no i don't think she is back uh then i guess let me take a quick break and we will get back uh again thank you all for uh joining us so far and yeah we'll we'll be back okay and we are back uh i am joined with uh china smith chicago-based artist now um i i guess i'm i am curious also about your organizing work because uh for us from what i saw of your profile you are uh you helped organize with a few different organizations i think one of the biggest ones that caught my eye was the Young Chicago Artists, where you are a chairperson, I believe, if that's if I'm correct. Yes. So that role was um, not necessarily an organizing role, but some of the skills and a lot of the things that I carry from organizing supported me in that role and landing that. Um, I was also in community with them for some time before getting that role and my favorite thing about that was that it didn't really feel like it didn't really feel like the typical like chairperson role especially since there were just a lot of differences in how young chicago authors and a lot of large organizations in chicago run as opposed to different orgs so with most of the program being around poetry i tapped in some of my skills that were transfer like transferable from organizing that kind of led into outreach and supporting with programming and using what I've learned about just mobilizing young people and being in spaces with them consistently to, you know, just give my input. And there was still a lot of poetry and we even had a podcast episode ourselves, um, my term on the chair. So doing podcasts was something that grew from that experience too, as it, um, it just took me to 
a different space, you know, something I was a little bit not used to because I think that organizing is a bit more on the ground, talking to people, door knocking and stuff like that. And that was an experience that I um I was married to for some years before stepping into this role. So what is fully entailed with uh, Neon Chicago authors? Um, like, like, what do they specifically do for um, for local like artists and authors in Chicago? Like, what what is the purpose of the organization? Their sole purpose is poetry writing and educational programming in and outside of schools, other organizations in the city, and their own organization. So that looks like the open mics that looks like the workshops that they have in and outside of YCA that looks like the festival that they host with um, other local organizations, some other orgs that they tap in with with partnerships. Um, they have other artistic mediums such as dance, music, and really just about anything that comes together. I'll say multimedia approaches because sometimes that does look like some of the visual and even digital skills that people have. So um, <clears throat> a lot has come in my connection from YCA. So that kind of did bring back some of the organizing and activism skills that I bought um, from other spaces into my role here. So other things that they had going on in the space, including like outside of the open mics were celebrations for different times of the year. There were certain Halloween and themed events that they had just to bring people together, but the workshops to strengthen yourself as an artist and a writer was pretty much the sole purpose and it had a lot of depth there. So in workshops, you will find some books being cited, you will find even videos being cited. The workshops were not just around, you know, your typical pieces of literature or media. There are moments we were unpacking song lyrics and how the parallels and the lyrics connected to some of the day-to-day -day things that were happening either right now or possibly in some people's schools or just homes to make space for that. So it goes on and on, but um, yeah, to summarize, mainly writing, community repair, stuff like that, and yeah. Now with your organizing work, what causes are you specifically um, uh, drawn to? Because I, I know you've done like a number of different um, yeah, yeah, I guess I'll start with there. Like, what causes are you specifically drawn to? Most recently, I've been drawn to mental health. And right now, I would say more specifically, wellness, which I think is, I know they sound pretty similar, but how we've been approaching it and some of the spaces I've been in, and even in my personal time, is stepping away from some of the more traditional and mainstream approaches to wellness that, um, I guess can leave a few people outside of the conversation and leave a lot of people who may not have direct access to their traditional system, you know, hanging. So um, mental health wise, um, I was supporting with a campaign called Treatment Not Trauma in Chicago, which was a very strong and at some point even controversial campaign because there has been a lot of disparities and lack of support for mental health centers on the south and west sides of Chicago. And outside of that, there has just been a lack of outreach and awareness of certain programs and support systems that could strengthen a person outside of, you know, a traditional medicine system, whether that's like yoga, whether that's alternative medicine, whether those are other cultures and practitioners who have the capacity to, you know, coach a person through a mental health crisis, you know, so that campaign, which took place from really from around 2020 and a little bit beforehand, still going on. Um, I got tapped in around 2021-ish when I was helping canvassing and just engaging with the campaign. By 2022, I was a field organizer with another person who is an, a dynamic young person. I haven't had permission to share their name, but I want to just give a shout out to them and the lovely support they offered. And with mental health, um, I guess for me and my personal interest in getting into that work, I've just seen a lot of holes in my own community. One of the mental health centers that got shut down in Chicago was blocks away from my home. So it was a very personal campaign when I came across it. And um, just going throughout high school without that support, 
pushed me to look at wellness differently. So I did turn to art. I turned to music. And at some point, expressing myself with spoken word was a part of that wellness because I was able to get certain things off my chest and just reversing the impact of bottling up and not knowing how to communicate those feelings nor be vulnerable without, you know, some type of support or softness. And now those efforts within wellness is expanding to a wellness fair that um, I'm supporting in with a bunch of, I guess, organizer is a, it's a term I embrace, but I guess right now some of the things I do go in and outside of organizing because um, some of the things that I'm learning and administering with wellness go outside of, you know, just mobilizing for like a specific cause. This is also a type of, hmm, this is a type of, I guess I could see myself as a growing mental health practitioner. I'm in the process of getting certified as well. So that has been going deeper than just organizing recently it's been learning how to show up for myself and others in the midst of those crises it's making sure i have the certifications and toolkits to refer people and with the wellness fair that's growing we want to create a series of spaces for people to learn more about that and how they can approach their own wellness and i'm going to stop there for now well, I, I am sorry to hear about um, that plight, I guess, for any of my listeners or, you know, any of your fans that check out this podcast and maybe they're not in the Chicago area. How would they be, be able to help with that? You can support by um, well, first connecting with me on Instagram, although this is Chicago based. I have recently been growing my network outside of Chicago, so um there's just a network that's being built around wellness and being prepared to have those conversations to question the efficiency of those systems. You can connect with me on Instagram. That's China, C-H-I-N-A, a period, B-0-L-L underscore, 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 three underscores. I'm going to type that out and make it less complicated. So connect with me. Um, I'm working on a public toolkit for mental health, safety planning, and recovery that can be accessed regardless of where you're from. So although this is Chicago based, um, we are very mindful of accessibility needs and those limits. So you don't have to physically be in Chicago to engage with this type of content as we have wellness circles that are virtual on the way. So when you connect with me, um, just stay tuned for updates. And if you want to support, we do have an Instagram page for the Wellness Collective that I will share myself at some point. Um, actually, could I pause for a second to go read the name? Um. Yeah, sure. One second. So you can find the Instagram's wellness page at crudo three 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 raw. That's C R U D zero instead of an O three 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 R A W. And again, it's crudo with a zero three 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 R A W. That's where we will update everyone on where the campaign well not the campaign the movement the work the love because this isn't necessarily connected to a larger campaign anymore um you can um find more information about where that's going on our instagram you can find more information about the campaigns that i'm working on or supporting individually at my own organizing capacity on my story and just connected to me personally there's a lot of events in and outside of Chicago that I may have the information to, regardless of what city you're in. So, yeah, just stay connected. Now, um, has your organizing work ever conflicted with, uh, you know, your your artistry? Because I know sometimes like a time balance or sometimes... Um, you know, it, it can basically just draw your attention away from that. Has has that ever been an issue for you, or you, because you're also talking about how it's kind of like like interconnected with your outreach work and how sometimes it's like an outlet for you. So I guess I guess what's your take on that? There are definitely moments where 
they conflict as far as time and the style because um some of the personal things that i reflect upon in my art kind of give me a perspective or a lens on some developments in the city that you know can make it um complicated to engage with certain comp- like campaigns long term and with some of the communities that i'm in there are lots of folks who may or may not be able to participate in a campaign directly just based on their own political views or their lifestyle. So some of those conflicts have definitely caused time, I guess some time, um, some time constraints, especially given that campaign work is typically a, a full time thing. It's also caused some conflicts and interests at times within myself which i will be honest about i think that a lot of any career fair you're gonna gonna you're gonna kind of gonna go through that um just conflicting interests changing interests at times i feel which is why even on the campaign work that i've done i evolved into a route that centered wellness at large which allowed everyone to be a part of that conversation and allow more room for some of my artistic expression. Now, um, before before getting you on the show, uh, I tried to find more of your work, and uh, admittedly, uh, I kind of had a hard time because uh, I I could not find. Like, I don't know if you are on YouTube or anything like that, but um, yeah, I had a hard time finding y- your work outside of the short reels that you have. So, is there anywhere that you host like longer? Um, I guess where we can find your music. I, I think you're on SoundCloud, if I'm not mistaken. But I guess just in general, where can people find your work? You can find most of my work on Instagram. My page is private right now. I will go public after today. You can find direct links to my music on SoundCloud, Spotify, and Apple Music. You can find some of my longer reels with longer poetry pieces on my Instagram and other artwork that I share throughout life on my stories and more. And um, also share information about shows that I may do or may plan um, on my Instagram typically. I will be updating my YouTube. So yes, I don't have a YouTube right now. Um, Yeah, I've been a lot. I've been trying to shift back into trying to be in person so do not mind my messy social media setup right now i'm getting it together so <laughs> no no that's fair it's just um yeah because i wanted to, to see more of your work outside of the short snippets that i could um a lot of what you do is very obviously very connected to uh chicago but do you have any aspirations outside of that? Like, you know, I, I know everyone, the dream is to go to and try and make it big in L.A. and things like that. So I, I guess what is the future scope for your work in terms of like what you want to do? So my future scope includes building a community. And yeah, I definitely do have a goal to make it somewhat big but I guess the older I've got I've leaned more away from Hollywood and just kind of questioned how realistic um Hollywood is like how realistically Hollywood reflects the artist community so some of my long-term goals includes just creating and connecting to similar communities in different cities as I think that some of the things I talk about in my art um they can be pretty universal So although Chicago does have a specific tone and attitude that comes from our layers, some of the artistic work that I've done has taken me outside of Chicago as far as learning about the different conditions of cities and neighborhoods and different cities and comparing them to Chicago to, you know, understand what could come of that. So I just would like to, you know, go into open mics in different cities, which is a goal that I've began to act upon. And also possibly bringing some of my activists and wellness efforts to different cities to collaborate. Um, I think the mutual aid and um, communist-ish community has been, it's not necessarily a community I'm directly in, but being in that community has helped me to expand some of my goals beyond Chicago, especially given this is not the most, this isn't the most segregated city ever. There's a lot that 
I could support and speak to in different cities just because of how universal my experience is. So yeah, um, I'm definitely open to expanding outside of Chicago. And um, I guess that's, that's growing. Those ideas are kind of, I'm kind of going with the flow with that. Now, you you were saying earlier that the L.A. scene you felt um, didn't really capture the essence of like, or or, I'm sorry, I don't don't want to mess up your, like, what did you say specifically? I felt that L.A. wasn't realistically reflecting the artist scene, and I still feel like it doesn't. Well, I'm curious if you can expand on that, like, what, what about the L.A. scene specifically you think is like kind of how it fails in that regard so um from a very i guess literal and realistic perspective i've taken that throughout my artistic journey is understanding my roots and where i come from and what is wanted or what is i guess supported in la although i do think that there are certain artists who are supported in la do reflect some of my experiences I think that even the social and economic conditions of LA kind of, a lot of people already cannot relate to that. So as I was singing and dancing growing up, I was, I guess, a bit humbled by some of the realities of the artists who I looked up to. I was humbled to see that some of them either came from privilege or came from a certain amount of training that, you know, certain artists either got later on in life or they had to stay in a longer, extend in a longer line, maybe in Chicago or in a different city for it. Now, Chicago's artistic scene is very cutthroat in certain capacities, but there's just a certain amount of, I guess, soul that I've been conditioned to bring out more when I perform. And oftentimes, I don't feel like that's been embraced or accepted in the spaces where, I guess, people were more what people prioritize, what people wanted in LA or deeper in the industry. Cause I think that LA is not just the only place that reflects the industry standards. I think other spaces such as New York and Atlanta has kind of given me a different perspective of the industry because those are two hot spots as well. So economically is one thing. I think socially, some of the identities that Chicago artists hold are not as respectable as what is embraced in LA. You know, there are certain stigmas that I guess Chicago artists, not just Chicago artists, but artists across the different cities and states hold that may not be as embraced. So you may be more buzz more on the underground scene and your goal, your audience may not be reached as much just based on I guess how you receive that's not to discourage any artist, but it's to understand that you can still be an artist whether or not you reflect what is needed or wanted right now. There's power in knowing your identity because that also leads to the power of knowing that people will always be different no matter what Hollywood wants. Hmm. Yeah, I think I think I get what you're saying, especially um well from my own perspective because I mainly follow like the film scene. I know that there has been efforts to kind of expand film production outside of LA in, in some ways because of reasons that you've talked about um and in Georgia they have been expanding with it's I think um Tyler Perry built like a studio there or something like that. And so there mm-hmm. has been like an expanded uh effort to kind of bring film production outside of um la and uh you know i I think just the more voices that you get into like any artistic like scene um the better Mm -hmm. um for yourself though i i guess um you mentioned how you wanted to go back to uh like like schooling essentially um what do you think you, you'll bring back into um you know going back to school now that you've like worked outside of it and what, like how what advantage do you think that could bring towards you like now taking this path as opposed to just committing yourself to school i think that now in revisiting schooling options and not just schooling options but what I do go to school for, um, 
there's just certain goals I have as far as not just time management, but really connecting with community in a timely way that I think that I could lean back into as I redirect in this journey. And um, I say that because I think that school has shown an immediate impact on some of my like skills as far as time management and my skills as far as typing, editing, staying on top of doing my best to at least get things together on a technical perspective. So there's just a lot of different things that came from school. And although I don't like the route that I took off initially, um, I'm still looking for something similar to really hone in on that because I think that there is power in structure and um, there is also power in recovering from burnout. <laughs> so that's that's another thing that I've been trying to, I guess, in this moment especially when talking about wellness is not just a hey guys get more sleep type thing it's rethink your entire lifestyle it's think about how helpful your chosen path is for yourself if you want to learn how to do something if you want to embrace a skill on how can you do that in a way that doesn't burn you out um i'm so sorry um no no you're fine that's kind of where I am now in this artistic journey and taking some of the things that I've brought to community as far as wellness and sustainability and bringing all of that home. Um, now, I, I guess yeah. kind of while we're on, in a way, the topic of community building, um, for yourself, are there any artists that you think uh, in the local scene or just even in general that you... I guess basically would want to shout out that you feel like they aren't getting the attention for one reason or another that uh, you feel like they should. So um, I want to shout out No Name. I don't know how popular No Name is in a scene. I don't know why I'm shouting this person out as if like I have more, <laughs> you know, community than them. But I think that this is an artist that not only has inspired me, but literally activated me in a sense to look at myself as an artist differently and think about sustainability as far as myself and what I offer to community. No Name is another Chicago-based artist who not only kind of brings that element of spoken word and rap in their music. Um, no Name has a book drive. No Name shows up in community in ways that I guess one would say is heroic. And um it has inspired like a larger chunk of artists just questioning how they can do that and stay true to themselves and their message throughout high school this was an artist that i looked up to heavily and also um they were activating in a way because a lot of the thought-provoking topics that came up in music um people will argue that they were controversial i think that for me it allowed me to it was a type of reality check, especially since that there were certain things happening in Chicago that I guess a few moments in history Chicago was highlighted for. So I love No Name. I'm always going to shout out Crudo Wellness Fair, our collective of artists who um, are also working on similar issues. And we kind of took our own route to wellness and artistry by wanting to create a more like a series of spaces for people to share arts and question wellness whether that's a mural whether that's spoken word whether that's them sharing their services there are a lot of people who have healing services or mental health and physical health services they want to offer shout out to jones sid chicle lucky all of y'all i love y'all shout out to literally everybody i've ever organized with that the list could go on and on because <laughs> right. they're also using art to organize and mobilize um well we are a little under um the hour mark but yeah i i think that's um i think that's fine for us uh at least now uh to all my listeners thank you so much for uh joining us today as i shouted out earlier in the episode but i'll do it here if you want to support the podcast you can do so in a number of different ways i have a ko-fi account for one-time donations um ko-fi also lets you do monthly payments but Again, I would recommend Patreon more for that because Patreon, you get rewards with different tiers. Um, all this is linked on my Twitter account, Twitter X account. God, Elon, hate him so much. <laughs> um, 
you know, on my social media uh, at, at podcasting pasta. Again, that's all one word. P's are lowercase. I'm not sure it matters. Uh, I have a link tree at the top of my profile um, that will also take you to my other platforms like YouTube, Spotify, what have you. Uh, China, thank you so much for joining us today. Uh, I know you did uh, shout your Instagram, but I guess um, I guess do it again here or where in general people could find you if they want to connect or anything like that. Thank you again for having me. You can find me on Instagram at china.d0ll3 underscores. I'll repeat it, china dot as in a period. D0LL3 underscores. You can connect with our wellness collective at CROD0333 RAW. That's CRUD0333 RAW. Thank you so much. Okay, and thank you for being on, and thank you all for listening or watching. Uh, I'm not sure if this is the final episode for 2024, but if it is, happy holidays, happy new year, and I hope you'll all join me for 2024. Thank you so much.